By the end of this video, you're going to completely understand the difference between systems of equations with one solution, with no solutions, and with infinite solutions. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to help you do that. So we're going to start with an example that has one solution, and then we'll do another example with no solutions, and we'll follow that up with an example with infinite solutions. And after we go through all that and we solve those, I'm going to talk about what one, zero, and infinite solutions actually mean graphically. And we'll go through that, and then I'll give you a problem to try and answer in the comments and by that point this should honestly be breezy and if you're looking for the notes for this video and guys we've been through this these aren't just any old notes these are printable notes with a QR code on them that'll take you back to the video and not only that they have the timestamps on them for all these different sections if you're looking for notes like that I have them linked in the description also linked in the description I have another video where we go through and solve 10 more systems of equations so if you're looking to get more practice especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff then I recommend you check out that extra video in the description. So we're going to start here with this system of equations, which I said has one solution. And you can go through and solve this a number of ways. You can use substitution method or elimination method. The question is just which method do you want to use here? And personally, I would use substitution method because we already have one of these variables solved for here. Y is solved for, it's by itself. So the top equation tells us that Y is the same thing as 3X minus 2. We know that because they are equal. So what I can do is in the bottom equation here, I can write this, I can rewrite this as X minus Y we know is the same thing as 3X minus 2. So I can plug that in for Y. And that's going to equal 4. So that's me rewriting the bottom equation. And now that I've done that, all we have left is x's. We can solve for x here and get x equal to a number. So I'll start off by distributing through this negative. So I'm going to get negative 3x. And then distributing that negative to a negative 2, that'll give me a positive 2. And that's equal to 4. So now x minus 3x, I can combine like terms there. And while I'm doing that, I also can get all of my non-x pieces to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides. And that'll give me a 2 on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, I have that x minus 3x, which is negative 2x. So now I can just simply solve for x by dividing by negative 2 on both sides. Doing that, I'm going to get 2 divided by negative 2, which is negative 1, and that gives me the value of x. So now that I've found the value of x, what I can do is I can plug that back into my substitution, and I can solve for y. Remember that y, remember we said that y is equal to 3x minus 2. That's the initial equation that we were given. That's what we used to substitute. And if we plug in that x is negative 1 now, what we're going to get is a negative 3 minus 2, which is negative 5. And that will give us our answer. If we write our answer as a xy pair, we get negative 1 comma negative 5. And we can circle that. So that is an example where we get one solution. That's generally what happens when you solve a system of equations. You get a value for x and a value for y. But now we'll get into two examples where that doesn't happen. One where there's no solutions, and now one where there's infinite solutions. We'll do the no solutions example first. So, how would we solve a system of equations like this? Well, again, you can use substitution method if you want to, but this time I'll use elimination method. And let's see, what variable do we want to eliminate here? Well, I think we could eliminate the y's pretty easily. If I just get a positive 3 here, then we can add the two equations together. That's elimination method. And by the way, if you are a little confused on how to do substitution or elimination method, and you want more of a, like a, I guess a slower tutorial, I have videos on both of those methods. So you can definitely check those out. So assuming we're all good here, we can just multiply on both sides of this bottom equation by what? Well, if we want a positive 3 here in front of the y so that we can cancel the y's out, we're going to need to multiply by a negative 3. Because if we multiply a negative 1, that's how you can think of this, by a negative 3, that gives us a positive 3. So let's multiply by negative 3 on both sides. So our top equation is going to stay the same. It's still 6x minus 3y equals 3. But our bottom equation is now negative 6x. That's what happens when you distribute the negative 3 to the 2x 
distributing the negative three to the negative y, we get that plus three y that we were looking for. And now we can get those y's to cancel off by adding the two equations together. And this is equal to four times negative three is a negative 12. So now let's add those two equations together. At this point, you might notice something fishy. Yeah, our y's cancel off, but the x is due too. We have a six x minus six x, that's zero. So we just get a zero on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we get a three minus 12. That's a negative nine. And so that is definitely an issue there. We've lost our x's and our y's. So when you lose your x's and your y's, you now know that you either have no solutions or you have infinite solutions. What will be the deciding factor between these two is if you have two numbers that you're left with that either equal each other or do not equal each other. In this case, we're left with two numbers that do not equal each other. Zero is not the same thing as negative nine. So we know that we have no solutions here. Now, if we ended up with two numbers that did equal each other, like if we got zero equals zero or two equals two or something like that, then we would have infinite solutions. And that's what you're gonna see in the next example here. So now we're gonna do an example where there's infinite solutions and how would you solve a system of equations that looks like this? Well, I can already see that this X is by itself on the left-hand side. So that makes me wanna use substitution method. So let's do that. I know what X is equal to. It's the same thing as Y minus two. And so I can take this bottom equation here and instead of writing negative three X, I know X is the same thing as Y minus two. So I just substitute in a Y minus two. Then I have plus three Y equals six. What that allows me to do is well, get rid of all of my x's. So now I just have y's left and I can solve for y. So distribute through that negative three to the y, we get negative three y. Distribute through that negative three to the negative two and you get a positive six. Then we have plus three y equals six. Now we can combine like terms on the left hand side that will actually eliminate the y's. And so now we already eliminated the x's and now the y's have went away too. That means that we either have zero solutions or we have infinite solutions. So we gotta figure out which one those are. Well, what we're left with here is six equals six. That's what is left over in the equation. These are two numbers that do in fact equal each other. And that means that we have infinite solutions. Six will always equal six. That's how you can remember that we have infinite solutions when these two numbers do equal each other because six will always equal six. However, if you had something like zero equals two, zero will never equal two. That's how you know that this is no solutions. That's how you can think about it. And now that we've talked about three examples, we've done an example where we have one solution. We've done an example where we've had zero solutions and we've done one with infinite solutions. Let's talk about what all of this actually means graphically. So here's the graphical interpretation. Whenever we solve a system of linear equations like this, these two things are lines. You can solve for y in both of them and get each of them into y equals mx plus b form. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and do it in this example. They're both lines. And what that means is we can graph each of these lines. And when we graph them, if they intersect, where they intersect, and they will most of the time, where they intersect is the solution. That's what we're finding. Like in the first example, if I scroll all the way back up, the XY pair that we found was where these two lines intersect. They intersect at negative one comma negative five. Now for no solutions, when we get two numbers that do not equal each other, the X's and the Y's go away. That's because we have these two lines that are never intersecting, which means they must be parallel. So that's no solutions. When we have infinite solutions, we get two numbers that do equal each other. And that means that we have two lines directly on top, on top of each other. So we start out, I mean, here's two lines right here and they're right on top of each other. So they're always intersecting. They're intersecting at every single point. And that is what is meant by infinite solutions. Because remember, the solution is where the two lines intersect. If they are always intersecting, then there's infinitely many solutions. So that is what's actually going on here graphically when we're solving a system of equations. So that is systems of equations in a nutshell. And assuming that you feel pretty comfortable with this at this point, here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Here, you wanna solve this system of equations here, and there could either be one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. So 
solve it. If there is a solution, let me know what the solution is. And if there's not, tell me if there's it's no or infinite solutions. So let me know that in the comments. And of course, if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now, again, if you're looking for more practice solving systems of equations, either because you feel like you need it or because you have a quiz or test coming up on this stuff, then I definitely recommend you check out that extra video in the description down below. In that video, you and I will go through and solve 10 more systems of equations and we'll do that using substitution method, we'll use elimination method, and we'll go through examples with one solution, no solutions, and infinite solutions. So again, the link to that video is right in the description. Lastly, make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel because look, these right here, these are my genes. And well, I'd like more of them. So if you subscribe, maybe I can make that happen. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hope this was able to help and I'll see you soon.